two of the DIY Avenger holster. Uh, part one, what we did was we made the pattern, we traced it out onto the leather, we cut the leather, we sanded the edges down a little bit better just to even them up a little bit. And what we're on to now is beveling the edges. Um, some people really like them round, there's different sizes of be beveling tools. I'll show you real quick. This is a number four. It just seemed really big to me. Some guys like real round corners on holsters. I don't really prefer that personally. So I went with the number two. And this is the area of the process that, I'll tell you, it can be a little bit tricky to keep on this line and get it all off. So just take your time. What I normally do is I start on the straightest piece because that's the easiest for me. And you just bevel the edges. I don't know if you can see that, but what it does is it takes that sharp corner off and kind of makes the edges nice. I'm going to go all the way around on the top piece here. What I'm not going to do is, normally you do both sides. I'll do the inside of the holster itself, but for this piece that sits on the holster itself, on the front, I'm not going to bevel, I'm not going to bevel this, this side right here because what happens is it makes it so round it almost looks like a duck's bill. So it just looks a little bit neater when that's square for me personally. You, know, you guys can do anything you want. It's your holster. This one's mine and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get that all done and we'll be back in a few. The edge beveling is all done. That's a hard technique. It's, it takes a little practice I think with the with that tool to make these edges come out really nice. I think that's where I'm lacking a little bit in this process. If anybody out there has any tricks or better techniques, uh, I'd love to hear back from you. You know, maybe teach me something new here. So now I have the the templates back in on these pieces. And what all that drawing was, what I told you in part one, we would get to. Um, this is for my belt slot. So I marked it on the template itself. These will be my stitch lines. And if you notice in here, I put a lot of X's, no glue and no stitch because when I did the first couple I would either glue the belt slot down or I'd stitch I put stitching here and ran it straight across so it just helps to remind me not to do it. The big one is the same thing this is where that piece will lay with the belt loops this right here is the angle of my belt and these are for my belt slots now one set is for a straight cant and the other set is for the 15 degree cant We'll start with the little one here. What I do is I just lay this back on the piece of leather, take my punch, and just mark for the where the belt slots are going to be drilled. I'll take that out to my drill press and, and drill. And so I don't forget to tell you, on these marks themselves, when you go to drill, make sure you keep the drill bit inside of that. If not, it'll be too wide. Now my belt is an inch and a half, so for yourself, you're going to have to measure your belt and make it according. What I did on here is I marked it, so I'm going for a straight cant, and that's where I'll drill those holes. I took the piece out to the drill press and drilled the slots for for the belt slot. Now you don't have to use a drill press, you can actually scribe that in and use a utility knife or they actually make make slot uh, belt slot cutters you can get those so I just take it out drill two three eighths holes right there I scribed a line and what I use is a chisel and I strictly use this just for the for the leather working what I did was I put down a, a thick heavy book a cutting board and an old piece of leather just so it doesn't dull the blade on the on the chisel. And I don't know if I can get this in frame or not, but take your time. Put it on my mark. Give it a few taps. slot 
is done on this piece. What I'll do is I'll run back out to the drill press. I have some really small uh, sanding drums and I'll clean up the inside here and we'll make it look a little prettier. Now some guys do the other, they do all their belt, belt slots at the same time. I wait on this piece, that's just my own. I found it to be a lot easier once I get it together, glue it, stitch it, and then I'll just go through the same process, drill my holes, take the chisel, and go through both pieces of leather so they're nice and lined up perfectly straight. So this way I'm not fighting trying to match this up. But it's starting to come together. We're uh, starting to look like a holster. Almost. A few more processes and we'll be right there. Belt slots all cleaned up. Took it out to the drill, drill press. Used the sanding drum and got in there and then beveled both edges on this. So I want that to sit flush. And when this is raised a little bit when you put it on the holster, nothing will snag. That's all done. Now I started my stitch groove be around the slot because that's it's pretty tedious right there and I didn't want to screw this up. So I figured I'd wait on camera to show you the rest of it. This is a groover for your stitch line. It helps your stitches, they actually almost countersink them into the leather so they don't get, things don't brush up against them and they don't wear down faster. Also, it helps you to keep a nice straight line when you go to make the holes for your stitching and for when you're stitching. You basically set this tool at whichever size you want, and this fat part runs down the side of the leather, and this actually makes the groove. Stitch grooves are all set. I went all the way around. Now what we do is there's a few different ways to do it. I'm not going to get into the other other ways, but what I prefer to do is use a there's a bunch of names for them. Pricking iron, stitching fork, stitching iron, pricking fork. This makes the holes for your stitches. There's a whole different way, a whole bunch of ways to do it. Some guys like to contact cement these two pieces together and then do it at the same time, but I found when I did that, it's harder to pull once you once you uh, mail up this through the leather. It's so hard to get out of two layers of leather, it kind of pulls the contact cement up a little bit. So what I like to do is go around the top layer first, then I'll contact cement it, and then I just go back and repunch them so it's easier to get through one piece of leather. With this, I use a cutting board over the granite or marble, whatever you're using, and a scrap piece of leather because I don't want this to go into the cutting board. It blunts the edges, and these are pretty pointy and sharp. So, what I do is I just start in one spot, making sure that the the pricking fork is straight up and down, so you're going perfectly straight. You don't want it off to an angle. Just follow those lines, and it goes through one piece of leather pretty easy. And you just follow those lines. I'll be back to show you the finished product. And here it is. All the stitch lines have been put into this piece. So we're getting close. That'll do it for part two. Um, part three will be the staining and then maybe staining and stitching and then four will be finishing I guess.